Hello, this is session 20 of the Black Theology, Black Church, uh, African American Religious Experience, Theology 333. I'm Professor Greg Jones, and I'm bringing you another session. This session, we're going to give some talk and some thought to the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, we must understand that the Civil Rights Movement uh, happened from about, um, I would say, in terms of activities, we'll see it going starting at the start of the century, but really uh, picking up at about in the 1940s uh, into about 1968. That's what uh, the time period that I'm going to deal with. And I'm going to kind of end it with the, uh, the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Civil rights movements was, was a global movement. And that's one of the things that uh, we do not uh, realize. It was a global movement for uh, justice and freedom. Some of the uh, people in the civil rights movement uh, that were of note were David uh, Abernathy, Ralph David Abernathy, Ella Josephine Baker, Ida B. Wells Barnett, Julian Bond, Stokely Carmichael, Angela Davis, and others. We'll be talking about many of them, but I want to first begin to uh, tell you that there were about this global movement uh, of civil rights movement. We, when we think about the civil rights movement, we always think about what's happening in America, what was happening with the American Negro or the American African American, uh, the African American community. But when we think about civil rights, we have to think about the entire uh, global community. And one of the things that I want to do in this first session on the civil rights movement is to tell you that there were Africans who were struggling for independence in the global community parallel to the civil rights movement. There were African uh, independent struggles struggles of independent nations of Africa uh, for civil rights, for uh, against colonialism and against uh, neo-colonialism for their independence as an independent state or independent nations at the same time that we had the uh, civil rights movement going. So let me just give you uh, some listings about some of the uh, struggles that were taking place. Um, when we look at uh, some of the folks who during this period of time were trying to find their independence from British or the British or the French or the Italian or the German colonial powers. Uh, we need to know that this was parallel to the civil rights movement in America. For example, uh, Libya uh, was struggling in 1951 uh, for their independence. The Sudan in 1956, uh, Tunisia uh, in 1956, Ghana in uh, March 1957, Guyana uh, in uh, 1958, the Cameroon in 1960, Senegal in 1960, Mali uh, in 1960, Madagascar in 1960, the Congo in 1960, uh, Benin in 1960, Somalia in 1960, uh, Burkina Faso in uh, 1960, uh, Cote uh, Ivier, the Republic of Ivory or the Ivory Coast in 1960, Chad in uh, 1960, Central African Republic in 1960, uh, Gabon uh, 1960, Nigeria uh, in 1960, Manteria uh, in 1960, Sierra Leone in 1960, uh, no, sorry, 1961, Tanzania in 1961, Burundi in 1962, Rwanda in 1962, Algeria in 1962, Uganda in 1962, uh, Kenya in 1963. Uh, uh, Malawi in 1964, Zambia in 1964, Gambia in 1965, uh, Botswana in 1966, uh, Swaziland uh, in 1968, Ecuadorian Guinea uh, 1968, Mozambique in 1975, Cape Verde in 1975, Angola in 1975, Western Sierra uh, in 1976, uh, Zimbabwe 1980, Namibia 1990. Um, Eteria in 1993. Uh, those are just some, uh, if not all, of the struggles that were taking place. Now, no, notice those dates. I, I read those dates for a purpose. I want you to understand that this was a uh, parallel struggle that was taking place all over the global community. Uh, three individuals that I want you to, uh, that are important to this, is, is uh, I want uh, I want to share with you three great and pro. Uh, pro prophetic leaders of this particular period. I want to tell you about these three. Uh, Yomo Kenyatta, born uh, October the 20th, 1893, died uh, 1978. He started Kenya's independent movement, father of Kenya's independent movement, served as the first prime minister 
then president from 1964 to 1978. He was anti-colonial. In other words, all these countries that I've read to you were under either British, French, Italian, or German rule. And what we see is we see uh, uh, the power struggle between those who are trying to hold on to uh, the, the colonial uh, power, power that they have with these nations and the nations themselves starting independent movements. They were kind of sparked and encouraged by the civil rights movement in the United States, but also the United States were, was encouraged and sparked and given uh, uh, some uh, um, encouragement in terms of the, the independence thrust that was taking place throughout the whole of the global community. Kwame Krumah, uh, born September the 21st, 1909. Uh, Nakafo Guyana, died April 27, 1972, in Bucharest, Romania. He led Ghana and the Gold Coast from 1951 to 1966, the Republic of Ghana. He was president for the life. He also was anti-colonial. Let me, let me just explain what that means. That means that when you, uh, uh, there was a division of Africa in the, early, uh, in the late 19th century, early 20th century, where the powers, the Western powers, essentially divvied up Africa and essentially said that they were going to divide Africa for its resources, for its oil, for its mineral, for um, the, the kind of resources that came out of Africa. And so um, those individuals, Germany, France, uh, Belgium, um, Great Britain, uh, were all a part of that. The United States was uh, connected in some ways to the colonial movement as well. Uh, we benefited off of our allies having uh, some interest in terms of the African continent, and we had some direct connection to the colonial movement as well. Uh, so these individuals, Kwame Krumah and Yomo Kenyatta, they led independent movements to stop the colonial exploitation of Africans and African people. Uh, one more individual that I want to touch uh, base with uh, today is Patrice Emery Lumumba, uh, born July 2nd in the Belgian Congo, uh, Congo, the first prime minister of the De Democratic Republic of Congo, and he was murdered January 17, 1961. Notice how this is very, very much in line with the civil rights movement in the United States. The Belgium, uh, Belgium, Great Britain, and the U.S., and the CIA were involved in his murder. He was also an anti-colonial leader. I want to uh, share with you uh, basically those individuals who were involved in the civil rights movement and now what I would like to do is kind of shift our attention to the United States and look at some of the specifics of the civil rights movement that uh, we are confronted with. Let me begin by giving you a list of civil rights organizations. Uh, I want to give you a list of uh, organizations that were involved in the civil rights movement and were prominent in the civil rights movement. Of course we know the NAACP, the Urban League, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the Congress for on Racial Equality, the National Council of Negro Women uh, uh, were, were predominantly involved, but there were others as well. And so here's a listing of those as well. And I will post these on uh, Blackboard so that you could have them, but I wanted you to hear them and understand how significantly uh, deep or in-depth was the involvement of African-American people to the Civil Rights Movement the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights, the, the American Civil Liberties Union, the Black Freemasonry in the United States, the Black Panther Party, the Congress of Racial Equality, the Inner Civic Council, the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, uh, the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, the Montgomery Improvement Association, the National Association for the uh, Advancement of Colored People, as I've said, um, uh, the National Rainbow Coalition, the National Urban Coalition, the National Urban League, Organization of African American Unity, uh, People United to Save Humanity, that's PUSH, that's a later organization, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference during the time of the Civil Rights Movement, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, I've mentioned, um, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, or just some. And as well, I want to give you uh, some uh, leadership, some names of leadership that we often, that not often are mentioned in terms of the Civil Rights Movement. Um, I started off by telling you about Ralph uh, David Abernathy and Ella Josephine Baker, Ida B. Wells, Daisy Lee uh, Bates, Julian Bond, Stokely Carmichael, Benjamin Chavis, Angela Davis, Frederick Douglass, 
uh, W. Du Bois, um, Miriam Wright Elman, Mega Evers, Myrtle Evers Williams, James uh, Leonard Farmer, Fannie Lou Hamer, Dorothy Height, Benjamin Hooks, Roy Ennis, Jesse Jackson, Johnny Jacobs, Barbara Jordan, Vernon Jordan, Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King Jr. of course, Jr. of course, John Lewis, Joseph Lowry, Thurgood Marshall, uh, Equisi Mafumi, Rosa Parks, Adam Clayton Powell, Asa Ra uh, Philip Randolph, Bernard Rustin, Bobby Seale, Al Sharpton, Leon Sullivan, Mary Church Terrell, William Trotter, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Booker T. Washington, Roy Ennis, Andrew Young, Whitney Moore, just some of the leadership that was there. We, we haven't mentioned a whole host of other people who were involved in the Civil Rights Movement, um, specifically during the dates that we're looking at in terms of the 1940s to the 1968. And I just want to give you uh, some sense of what was going on at that time. I actually grew up during that time. And, and you know, I was in grade school, and, and essentially what was going on is people were looking for housing, people were looking for education and jobs, People were tired of the domestic violence that was taking place both South and North. In the South, we had the Ku Klux Klan. In the North, we had the American Nazi Party. Uh, and so when King and Malcolm and, and these leaders came on the scene, their primary emphasis was on voters' rights and the end to uh, uh, segregation. It starts off with Thurgood Marshall's uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, the struggle where we get uh, separate but equal, uh, we're struggling with separate but equal accommodations in terms of the African American community, but also we're talking about the whole notion of integration. And so the civil rights movements jumps to national prominence when uh, individuals begin to organize themselves to address the, the issue of the separate but equal uh, accommodations in the South. Um, we see uh, several things that take place during this particular time, I want to share some of that with you as well um, so that we might be able to be able to use this information in our discussions uh, online. Uh, we had boycotts in 1953, 1955, 1956, and 1957. Uh, the, uh, we have a, in 1953, we have a, bu a bus boycott in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In 55, we have a one-year uh, bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. In 1956, a six-month boycott. Uh, in, de uh, in desegregated buses in Tallahassee, Florida. In 1957, we have uh, uh, a Tuskegee boycotted white merchants to protest gerrymandering in local electoral districts to reduce black voting strength. During what's going on this time, people were being threatened. Uh, there was uh, expanded restrictions in terms of African Americans uh, developing uh, the ability to vote in local uh, jurisdictions. Uh, in 1956, 57, and 62, we see uh, desegregation of schools taking place, authoring J, uh, authoring J. Lucy admitted to the University of Alabama. Um, the black students uh, desegregated Central High School in Little Rock, and, and James Meredith gained admission to the University of Mississippi with the aid of federal troops in 1962. We see in, from 1949 to 1960, lunch counter sit-ins. The, uh, the, the Congress on Racial Equality stayed sit-ins to protest segregated public accommodation in St. Louis in 1949. In Oklahoma City, the NAACP Youth Council began sit-ins to desegregate lunch counters. In 1960, students from Fisk University staged a sit-in to demonstrate against segregation. And in 1960, college students sit-in at F.W. Woolworth lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, in 15 days, similar actions spread to other cities. We had kneel-ins and pray-ins in 1957, 1961, and 1967. Martin Luther King Jr. led 25,000 people on a prayer pilgrimage to Lincoln Memorial to support voting rights. And 61 students arrested in Rock Hill, North Carolina. Um, these were a student nonviolent coordinating committee. Uh, jail, no bail was the slogan. In 1967, welfare mother locked herself in the building in Roxbury to uh, protests of uh, uh, discrimination. Freedom bus rides, we have several of them, 1947, 1961, two in 1961, all led by Congress on Racial Equality. Uh, uh, protests and marches, we have in 1955, Montgomery boys, uh, bus boycott. In 1960, we have over 2,000 African Americans marched in City Hall, Nashville, Tennessee. 63 marches in Savannah, 
uh, Birmingham March, uh, 1963, we also have the March on Washington. We had 1965, we have the Selma to Montgomery March. Uh, 1966 uh, March in Chicago aimed at housing discrimination. I actually was in grammar school, Betsy Ross Elementary there, and uh, we were part of uh, a group that uh, was, uh, uh, saw uh, directly the rioting that took place because blacks were moving into uh, Marquette Park, so to speak. Uh, 1968, you had the Poor People's March on Washington. Um, you had voter uh, education and registration drives as well. In 1959, 1960, 1960, and 1965, we see uh, vote, major voting, uh, voting drive adding thousands of African Americans to registered voters. The NAACP leads one uh, in Jacksonville, Tampa, and Savannah and Memphis. Um, the Congress of Federated Organizations, SNCC, CORE, SELC, and NAAC recruited a thousand black and white volunteers to help African Americans register to vote. Um, in 1965, we see the SELC launching voter registration drives in Selma, Alabama. So, uh, this is the, the Civil Rights Movement. And one of the hallmarks of the Civil Rights Movement is uh, the jailing of blacks. The murdering of leadership, we see Malcolm X killed in 1965, we see Martin Luther King killed in 68, we see Megar Evers uh, murdered, we see um, uh, people jailed, people put in hospitals, people beaten, unconscious. Uh, we, we see a tremendous upheaval in the African American community. Also during this time, we see the beginning of what we call the Long Hot Summer, which was riots every summer in places like Detroit, Chicago, uh, Washington, D.C., uh, Florida. And so it's a very turbulent time. The music of the time speaks of that. And also the, the times themselves the speak of the frustration that African Americans have had at dealing with the issue of institutional racism and, and um, the lack of um, um, humanity that America shows to its African American community. We'll have more on next time. Thank you.